Exodus 25, verse 8. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. And uh, in Hebrew, it's uh, to say dwell is v'shachanti b'tochem. Shachanti, shachan is to dwell. Lishchan. Lishchan. How do you say tabernacle in Hebrew? Mishkan. Do you hear? Mishkan, Lishachan, Shachanti. And Shachan. Shachan. Yes, right. So the, the, the word tabernacle, especially for uh, 21st century folks, is kind of a bit of a weird word, you know, yeah. like an old word that doesn't seem to resonate with us. But really what it is, let them make me a dwelling that I might dwell among them. And if you saw, like, it was really quite well done, wasn't it, down there? Mm -hmm. What really is it? It's a series of barriers to protect the holiness of God from the defilement of the people and the defilement of the people from the holiness of God. This is the only way God could dwell among his people is by a series of barriers. So first, you have the court. You couldn't enter into the court unless you were ritually clean if you had touched a dead body sorry you're not going inside you have to wait and uh, wash with water and so on 24 hours later you can go uh, so that's uh, barrier number one barrier number two is you could only the priests could come into the actual tent itself and so if you were not a priest you couldn't go and then barrier number three, only the high priest could go through the veil into the Holy of Holies and only once a year. And even when the high priest went, he had to take a censer full of coals so that there was like a cloud that still was like a barrier between him and the presence of God. This was the arrangement God uh, gave to Israel so that he could dwell among them and then once a year of course they had to clean the day of atonement was not only to forgive the sins of the people and make atonement for them but also for the sanctuary because corrupt humans would touch it and so on so the the day of atonement was not only for cleansing the people but actually the sanctuary itself was cleansed on the day of atonement and uh, the thing is, uh, according to the Torah, if something clean touches something unclean, what happens to it? Defiles it defiles it. You know, in Malachi it says, ask the priest, you know, if he's got some holy food in his robe and he touches something unclean. It, but it doesn't go the other way around, yeah, right? right. <laughs> If something unclean touches something clean, it, it doesn't become clean. Yeah. But I'm, there's one exception to this. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> the, the dwelling place of God, you know, Yeshua, it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. In Greek, the, the word is pitched his tent among us. It's, it's making this echo of this place. The presence of God. You've seen me, you've seen the Father. When the purest holiness touches something unclean, it doesn't get defiled. Yeshua touches a dead body, the dead body comes to life. Yeah. Yeshua touches a leper. Sorry. No, Dad, I'm fine you're with that. <laughs> we're, we're relative. <laughs> Yeshua touches a leper. The leper is cleansed. A bad sinner. A bad sin. <laughs> Yeshua touches you. Yeshua touches me. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. We become clean. So this, you know, you can look at the whole enterprise of Scripture is that he might dwell among us. And he dwells not only among us, he dwells in us. We have this treasure in these earthen vessels and uh, this place i think just really helps us to appreciate this in a new way all right Amen. let's keep going let's get to the